Um, and we had we had gone there a lot, and uh, it had always been the parents, you know, the guy, the people that started the restaurant, that had waited on us. And we, I don't know if we had, you know, just said a number, or maybe they didn't, you know, understand what we were saying. But uh, one time we went there, and uh, it was one of the kids that was uh, waiting the table, and. Um, we asked for the vegetarian pho, and he was like, the pho's not vegetarian. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> right, exactly. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't get bent out of shape about stuff like that. I mean, we were like, well, I guess we won't go there anymore, but, you know, it's like whatever. I'm not a, you know, some people, like, they're allergic right. to meat, so, like, you know, that's like they have to be very clear about that kind of stuff, but it's like I don't I mean it's my type two diabetes but not eating bread. Yeah. So whenever I tell somebody at a restaurant, you know, hold bread, no croutons, they're like, Well it's not gluten free. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of gluten is no big deal. Yeah. It's all those empty carbs that I don't need. Alright. Probably no one needs them. <laughs> N no one who uh, you know, is uh training for America. <laughs> well, I was thinking no one who's like homeless or <laughs> but uh but yeah, no, that's true. If you're uh I I don't know about bread though, even like if you're a uh, if you're a marathoner like you probably want a lot of carbs when you're or more complex like whole grain. Yeah. The white bread, white bread is the number one source of sodium. Yeah. In the American diet. Yeah. That's what uh my uh, father-in-law, he has diabetes. He doesn't get it. I think Wait. some of that might be a language barrier, but like... Well, it's a cultural thing too. I, I got diagnosed in my 40s and I made a lot of changes, but the nurses before I go to the doctor, they're all like, Wait. it's a good thing you weren't in your 50s because men in their 50s don't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's colloquial, Wait. but you know. Yeah, no. Try to tell a 50 year old to stop eating pizza and this is not going to happen. Right. Wait. out chipmunk <laughs> I didn't get, catch that it's like English countryside weather oh yeah yeah it's not too hot. yeah sure speaking of countryside uh, yesterday I went down to Chaska um, for my metric century that's how you got all the miles but yeah I, I'd never been down there and one of my friends uh, lives down there so I was like eh, I'll figure out how to get there um, tomorrow but when I was planning it out tomorrow. <laughs> um, but uh, there are like cornfields out there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> I tell people, I grew up in Macon, Georgia, and I tell yeah. people, Minneapolis and Atlanta aren't really that different in a lot of ways. I mean, people, it's, it's colder, but you've got a big metro population, you drive 60 miles in any direction, it's God, guns, and trucks. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's an agricultural economy, fairly conservative, actually. Of the metro. Yeah. Well, I would say we don't have quite the sprawl issue that Atlanta does, Atlanta but I mean, the the thing that kind of mitigates that here is that it's Minneapolis and St. Paul. Yep. So, like, the sprawl is kind of just built in. <laughs> well, and we have the Met Council actually draws a perimeter around the metro yeah it says they're not going to extend the sanitary sewers yeah so once you get outside that loop you have to have at least an acre per house you have to have septic ah and so they have reined in you know when you start to get out to hugo or down in chaska or some of yeah. those places once you get to a certain point there are no more residential neighborhoods like you see hmm. they won't let them put the sewer in 
I mean, but that's just going to be Hennepin County, right? I mean, so. Oh, no, no. It, no, it's, it's a seven county metro. It's, okay, it's, yeah. It's a seven county, it's the metropolitan statistical area. Yeah. Now, the problem is that means we have housing shortages. Yeah. And we have a lack of affordable housing that's exacerbated by that. The invisible hand of the market is like Atlanta or Houston, right? You just keep building. Yeah. But then you have the tragedy of the commons. Because you start to destroy all the wetlands. Seven. Hey. I had a flat tire at that intersection one time. Uh, and I always carry my bus card now. Because all I did was just wait for the bus. And he took me all the way back to St. Paul. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I don't carry a tube or anything. <laughs> yeah, I, I... You know, this, this will change if I... If I keep my plans the way that... You know, what they are now, then... But right, so far, I've never been cycling far enough out to where I couldn't have somebody come and get me right. and like right now I don't need to be putting a lot of walking miles on my ankle but in general it's like okay if I need to walk 15 miles to get to a bus <laughs> it's really not that big of a deal you know I did um go through yesterday uh, I think this was st. Louis Park but I wouldn't swear to that okay. um, there was a, some signs that said coyotes active in this area oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and like i knew that but i didn't know that they were like a big enough problem to where like you needed to put up signs yep. North so. there are people who have had their pets yeah although for the most part i think you, you stay away from them they stay away from you but yeah well i usually when i ride by myself and just like blasting metal as loud as my speaker will go so probably the coyotes were not attracted to that <laughs> um but so we uh I dr discussed this slightly uh before I turned on the uh, the camera, but uh, you're not much of a gearhead. <laughs> no, 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 but, I, but I, I have, I got my first bike when I was in first or second grade, the Schwinn Stingray with the banana seat. Okay. And then when I was in seventh or eighth grade, I got my first 10 speed. Nice. But I, I, I probably bike two or three hours every day until I turned 60. I mean, like, that was my primary mode of transportation. Ah, nice. And, uh, so without even thinking about it, so when I, I put my bike away for a long time, but once we started living here, um, you know, after my kids were born and stuff, I sort of rediscovered, it's like it's a, you know, deep grooved in neural pathway. Oh, yeah. So you never I forget, right? <laughs> immediately calm myself down, but it's like if I had to think, if I had to turn it into something that was like work, like my son's kind of a gearhead, like he'll he build bikes. Yeah, ah. He has a Bianchi frame with Frankenstein parts and tires, and he's really into that. I just, that's why I like simple bikes, too, because I just like to get on and then. Nothing. Okay, you say that, but I see a lot of gears on that bike. Yeah, but I only use two. Mm. <laughs> I have a high and a low. <laughs> so not a lot of... Uh, actually really low if I'm pulling a big hill. Yeah, I was going to say, you're probably not tackling the uh, Bohemian Flats area if you're only using two gears. No. Although yesterday when I was pulling up out of Crosby, it was St. Paul Marina. And the hill up from Crosby Farm Park up to Shepherd Road there by Buca. That's like a, it's a significant grade. Yeah. I was in the lowest gear and I was just pedaling very furiously. <laughs> but I made it. Yeah. But I think, you know, it's, it's kind of like going back to the conversation we were having about meat and vegetarianism and stuff. And I 
I, I dealt with this a lot with my kids, but we're in this era of massive specialization and experts and like people. And it's like how much, you know, if you, in order to ride a bike, if you have to know all this stuff and you don't ride it, well, that's not, you know, why not encourage people to ride? Right, uh, yeah. The bigger question that comes up with like the bike share, like the nice rides, Yeah. most people don't have helmets. Yeah. That's the big dilemma. Well, is it healthier to ride a bike and run the slight risk of a head injury without a helmet or for people to say, well, I'm not going to rent that bike because I don't have a helmet? Yeah. And the public health officials, there's a, you know, there's a divide there. Yeah. If you go to Europe, we went to Copenhagen when my daughter was studying abroad and there are some people with helmets, but most people didn't. Yeah. In fact, I told somebody, everybody bikes, but if you go out at 2 in the morning, everybody's leaving the pub on their bikes yeah. smoking a cigarette. Yeah. But they're biking. Yeah. <laughs> no. Right. I mean, you know, those cities are so old that, like, you can't drive that fast in them. Right. So... The, the, the little pathways for the horses and carts. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that's... Uh, part of our problem but but I know I'm more likely to bike if I have a simple bike like this but yeah. I can just get on and go and... yeah I mean some people they they enjoy the well there's nothing wrong with them just saying if you want more people to stop driving so you can yeah Yeah, for sure. It is the same thing with like the people, the like anti e bike people, which I just, I don't understand that at all. It's like how many people have been killed by an e bike? You know, it's Probably like. People than, like I, heard, I heard like six kids have been killed in Austin, Texas on those scooters. Those rental scooters. Yeah. I mean, on the one hand, that's a great idea too, but it's kind of a. Between cities and traffic and pedestrians and very interesting experiment yeah I just mean if you're like you're a cyclist and you're concerned about like traffic then like e-bikes are not the enemy no in fact they help to justify the need for the bike way. right <laughs> and so but I don't know you do kind of wonder too that like some of this stuff makes so little sense like is it like Russian bots? Like, I guess like, it seems like a weird thing for Russian bots to be just like saying stupid stuff about, but yeah, but at this point it's like, who knows? Maybe. Keep people arguing about something stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, you know, if, if somebody is like really heavy, you know, morbidly obese, like they're not going to be able to bike a regular bike so like I don't know I just I see so much like anger <laughs> towards e-bikes and I just don't get it it's like okay if somebody's entering a race and like cheating right. with their e-bike okay sure that <laughs> but you're but the anger should be at the cheating not at the e-bike like it's like it's like if you're in a car and you're trying you know you like skip part of the route and hop in a car and show up on the other side like that's not an e-bike that's cheating <laughs> but yeah it's interesting it makes me think too about one of the things that i talk about in my ethics classes uh, design thinking and accessible design oh yeah and it came from a higher ed policy class that i took when i was working on my phd where one of, the, one of my classmates worked at the university in administration, but he was profoundly physically disabled. He was in like uh, a big chair. Uh. But mentally he was fine. Yeah. And so he gave a presentation on accessible design. And honestly, it was one of the most transformative. And like, I, I, I still think about it because he put a picture up of one of our old Gothic buildings. Yeah. He's like, when people talk about higher ed, this is what you think of. We were all like, well, yeah, look at that beautiful building. And then but we realized, you know, it had the marble steps. Yeah. And he's like, this is what I see. And he slipped the slide, it was a wall, you know? Yeah. And he kept saying, now think about it. Think about the last time you were carrying a heavy box or rolling a cart. And you said, wow, this ramp is sure helpful. Yeah. And then you leaned over with your butt and you hit that button. And you're like, 
well, this is really nice to have this door opener. Yeah. He goes, how many of you have found that, you know, quote unquote, handicapped accommodations were actually super helpful yeah. for everybody? Yeah. And we were all like, oh. And then he's, you know, curb cuts. I mean, everything he kept talking about, it's like, it's not, if we think about it from a deficit model. We turn and left. Yeah. Okay. No problem. That's why I have these tires and not like puny little road tires. <laughs> one of the things he said was if we keep thinking of it from a deficit, like these are, these are you know, extra accommodations for yeah. handicapped people, your mental attitude toward them is negative. Yeah. But if you think about it as starting from the very beginning, designing for everybody, you know, you can make the argument that it's beneficial it's more e equitable for everyone and it sets up less of an us and them opposition yeah so i mean of thinking of people as being handicapped you're just differently able than right we all are. for sure and it's like you know even if like uh like i've i've been on I and mean, i've still got them at work and i'll still use them on tuesday but um i've got crutches to just try to stay off my ankle and um yeah. It's hard to go up steps on crutches. <laughs> right, right. I mean, if a, like a ramp is like easy peasy. I mean, crutches in general are like not the easiest way to get around. No. <laughs> but, That's why the little scooters, the little yeah. knee scooters are actually are preferable, I think. Yeah, no. I mean, I just, these are like, I, like I've, I mean, my wife is a physician. Right. So like, you know, but I haven't actually gone in to a physician and like been prescribed anything like okay. these are just like leftover crutches <laughs> uh, they're not even the right height for me like but you know they're they're good enough um to help me stay off my ankle so but i'll tell you what i um went to the biltmore house this was just a few days after i rolled my ankle yeah. And they had wheelchairs there. Oh wow! And so I used one of those, and like, uh, like the difference between that and like the crutches is just like another world. Like, it was amazing. 